Hello there, this is Amara Casavito. We're at the end of the semester and this time I want to do something a little different in, uh, than what I usually would do at this point traditionally for this course. Often I've given a lecture on the future of computing and provided some of my own viewpoints on the matter. Uh, this time I'm going to give you just a few key ideas but want you and I together to develop uh, uh, some sense of what's next and where are we going with computers given where we are now. And I want to kick this off uh, by suggesting that, uh, these ideas and send you to uh, our cyber lectures area uh, f to the most current topic which is going to be the future of computing. In there I'm asking you to post at least three times three times you may post uh, a new topic thread a new thread within uh, the topic uh, you may post responses to uh, other threads that are in there or, or a response to a response the, the effect I'd like to have is of a sense of discussion and uh, conversation and of course feel free to post many times beyond the three if you will I'll attempt to go in there once or twice a day and look at uh, comments and you know address your issues a little bit uh, encourage also I'll also encourage my co-teacher to go in uh, Maggie and uh, make some comments and uh, let's see if we can create a uh, conversation over the next few days starting uh, today and uh, you know um, you're more likely to be seen the sooner you're in there unless uh, you know, rather than being late and at the last time it's it's difficult to think about these issues um, but let's try. I want to just throw out a few fundamental ideas. First idea is uh, basic trends. I believe there are certain basic trends in computing that, w that have been around for a while and still persist. And these are four of them. Uh, mobility, ubiquity, embedding, and flexibility. I think that we will keep going toward more and more mobility with computing that is that our devices and our uh, will follow us uh, more easily as time goes on and you've seen of course that happening with the cell phone as it becomes your pocket computer but there's new varieties of mobile computing and devices being invented virtually every year now and they go to market and in fact I think I'll, I'll, I'll put out one of those in one of the threads uh, later on. Uh, ubiquity means that our computing capacity is become is starting to be available to us everywhere in all kinds of forms for instance uh, you can do your online banking on your computer screen or on your uh, PDA or on the telephone and essentially access the same files in the same way but there are movements toward having more and more devices which are very specialized for computing purposes like radio frequency tags on inventory in big stores so that all the inventory items actually emit a, sl a s slow low energy radio frequency and they can be tracked as uh, if they're placed in different parts of the store for different purposes. Embedding is the idea that the computer actually gets placed inside of different objects. Uh, for an example is a, a espresso making machine that has a small uh, microchip that knows your favorite flavors for different part times of the week and it's easy to program. Some computers will probably be embedded in your heart and other parts of your body or embedded in they're already embedded in cars. Uh, the sky's the limit. Anything you can imagine probably somebody's attempting to develop some technology to embed a computer within something else that's not a computer but the computer's in there. Um, flexibility uh, is the play, uh, the, is what I've referred to as the real playoff. We keep moving toward a world of more and more flexibility in the use of our computing power. For instance, this m micro lecture uh, here that I'm doing on YouTube, five years ago this would be almost impossible. Now uh, I have the flexibility to do this, to sit in my office and initiate a conversation would you distribute it in all your dorms, various homes, at different times and places? You may be in a cafe. I have no idea where you're going to hear this. So those are the payoffs. And uh, um, I was introduced to this idea by another professor some years ago about uh, one thing we can learn about the evolution of computers by looking at the evolution 
of electrification. You know, electricity was not always available to all of us in the past, and it uh, once it was uh, electricity became available. Um, for instance, uh, certain things happened. Uh, here's here here's a a, a progress uh, report for electrification. Electric motors started to replace the steam engine for central power for central power production. Plants had a steam engine that would uh, produce the power that would run and drive a conveyor belt. All right. When electric motors were invented, the concept was to replace the steam engine uh, with the electric motor. So you had a big electric motor that fed mechanical energy through the conveyor belt. They were big and expensive. Same with computers. When computers got invented, they were bigger than expensive. When you saw at the early part of the semester, you saw the movie called Giant Brains, big, expensive computers, very centralized. And then the next uh, level with electrification is that power still had to be distributed with conveyor belts, and the same thing with computers. We, uh, we had a central computer, and the information had to be passed back and forth through the whole organization by various means and come back to uh, the central machine. As the com engines got smaller, and uh, electric engines got smaller, um, the the engine could be placed at the point of production. So instead of a conveyor belt, you could have a small engine, electric engine, uh, at a drill press machine, for instance, and one operator would have an individual engine. Of course, this is what happened to us. We now have portable laptops and little computers are just everywhere. They're available in different sizes and shapes for different kinds of purposes. And then newer engines got cheaper and more embedded. And uh, I say computers are getting cheaper and more embedded. And that's the story uh, looking at it in parallel with the evolution of uh, electrification along uh, along the lines of the development of electric engines. I want you and myself to imagine now that we're starting from this position in the history of computing, the current, so we're not history, we're just here, and looking forward. And I think we can identify internet software technologies and some hardware devices and some trends and technology that uh, will give us some idea of where we're going. And uh, this exercise is not necessarily easy, but let's just scratch our heads and uh, you know try this, try that. Uh, it may not be perfect, but have a conversation about this kind of thing. I will. I have will. I have put up a discussion topic called uh, the future of computing. And uh, I will be looking there periodically. It's in the forums in BSpace, and we'll meet there. So let's uh, have a little fun. It's the end of the semester, and I'll see you all on uh, Monday face-to-face, -face, and we will have some lecture participation that particular day uh, this coming Monday. We'll uh, see each other in various modes. Bye-bye for now.